Today I need to change this banjo head and I'm going to show you how I do it. Hey you guys, Johnny Banjo with The Banjo File. Thank you for stopping by. So today I'm swapping out this banjo head on this, uh, my Vega Senator banjo. Um, it has this nice deering, uh, glossy black head on it. Uh, that I just put on. I just changed the hardware. I changed all the nickel plated hardware to brass plated hardware and um, put on a head and discovered that it's it's the wrong head. So I'm going to replace it with this one. Now you might wonder, well that one looks, the replacement looks exactly like the original. What's wrong with the original? It's the wrong crown height. Now the issue of what crown height is and why it matters and what happens when you get it wrong is beyond the scope of this video. So I'm going to make a, a separate video where I explain all of that and I'll provide a link in the description to that. So just just trust me that I need to tr I need to change this uh, banjo head here with this one here. All right, so let's talk about what tools we need in order to change our banjo head. Now, the, of all the tools I've laid out here, only actually one is necessary. It's uh, this one here. It's the uh, bracket wrench. <laughs> All you need is a bracket wrench that fits the hex nuts on your banjo. Um, they're probably 5 16 inch. That, that's the most common one on, on open back banjos, although they may be a quarter inch or they may be a different size entirely. The bracket wrench may have come with your banjo, or you can, you can buy one from banjo makers or music stores, Amazon sells them. Um, or you can go to a hardware store and just get um, uh, hex wrenches um, in, in those common sizes. Try those sizes, quarter inch, five sixteenth inch, see which one fits your banjo. Um, and then you got, a, you got a hex wrench. Pisgah Banjo Company makes this nice multi-tool here. Um, and it, uh, it comes apart and there's a screwdriver tips and if you remove the screwdriver tip, um, that's a hex wrench right there. So you can reassemble it and it becomes a hex wrench. I like this tool a lot. Uh, it's very useful, sold by uh, Pisgah Banjo Company. So you get screwdrivers and you got your hex wrench in there, two common sizes. Um, some other things that are nice to have, well, of course, you're going to need strings to restring your banjo after you're done. And I have certain tools that I like to use when I'm restringing a banjo, um, wire cutters and needle nose pliers, um, and also a graphite pencil. Um, I use that to um, rub graphite in the slots of the bridge and the nut. Uh, to prevent the strings from binding in the slots. It acts as a lubricant. I find that a mechanical pencil is um, easier to use than a traditional pencil for that. I also have a capo because um, it could be useful to have a capo to hold the strings down on the neck when you're restringing your banjo, um, especially if you have a no-knot tailpiece. This is not a no-knot tailpiece. This is a um, Pisgah hocktail tailpiece which um, does a fairly good job of securing the strings at the tailpiece end. But a no-knot tailpiece just has, the, um, just has the posts that the loop goes over and nothing else. Nothing else is holding the string down. So it tends to pop off the post while you're restringing, while you're fiddling around at the peg head end. So I like to use a capo to hold the strings down um, on, on the neck, uh, keep them secure and taut at the tailpiece end so that they don't pop off while I'm, while I'm stringing them up at the, at the peg head end. I have also um, some cloths, um, a, just a microfiber cloth uh, for dusting, in case it's dusty. Uh, when you take the head off, you might find that you, you know, you, the pots, the hardware, um, the tone ring underneath, you might find things are dusty, so you might want to dust it off. And for the same reason, I've got some Deering Care cloths, um, some uh, hardware polishing cloths, tarnish remover, and a polishing cloth. Again, just in case while I've got the head off, while I've got the hardware off, um, I may want to uh, clean it. <laughs> um, also, I have here a uh, Music Nomad neck cradle, which is helpful for holding the neck up and um, a Music Nomad, this surface that I have here, this Music Nomad um, uh, instrument mat provides a nice soft cushion surface to lay your banjo out on. And finally, I have this drum dial. Um, it's a, a way of measuring the head tension. It's used by, 
by drummers to, mention, to measure the tension in their drum heads. And this is comparable to a drum head. Um, it's used for the same purpose here. You don't need any of this stuff. It's just nice to have. All you really need is, you know, your strings and, and, and a wrench for removing the hex nuts. So I'm going to start by removing the strings from my banjo, which I do by uh, putting a lot of slack in them and then just pulling them off the posts. So I just uh, loosen them until there's a lot of slack and then I just pull it straight up off the post. And uh, at the tailpiece end, it just comes off. If I had a more elaborate kind of tailpiece, um, one that's more typical of bluegrass banjos, like a Waverly or a Presto style tailpiece that, that uh, has holes that the string threads through, then I might want to use wire cutters and cut the strings it, uh, so that um, uh, I, can, I can get them off the tailpiece end more readily. Now, of course, once the strings are off, the bridge just lifts right off and I'll just set that aside. A little bit dusty under there. And um, don't be surprised that the tailpiece is no longer secure. So it just flops around now. Uh, that's normal. It's held, in, it's held in place partly by this bolt, but also it's um, uh, held firmly in place by the string tension. So that's just gonna flop around a lot. And, and that's okay. Um, next, I'm going to turn the banjo on its face and loosen, not remove, but loosen all of the, um, all of the hex nuts. I'm going to greatly loosen them. I'm going to loosen them in, to the point where the um, J hooks come off of the uh, tension hoop. Um, I don't want to take the hooks, I don't want to take the nuts completely off and remove the hooks just because it's it's not necessary <laughs> and it's extra work. It may be the case that um, the hardware is dirty and if it is dirty, if it's very dusty or it's got a lot of uh, grime on it, then I might want to remove it in order to clean it. And I have a separate video, link in the description, on how I deep clean a banjo. Um, but this hardware is not dirty. It's, it's in fact new. I only recently uh, installed it on this on this banjo, so I'm not I'm not going to be doing that. So all I do is is just loosen it uh, to the point where it comes off the uh, comes off the tension hoop, um, and then I have all these hooks sort of flopping around. and And you may wonder, is that is that going to hurt anything? Um, no, not really. Um, see the hooks just sort of come off. And um, yeah, it's, it's a little it's a little weird. Now I got all these hooks kind of just flopping around um, <laughs> and uh, getting in the way a little bit. But oh, I missed one. But I find that um, I'm lazy. <laughs> I find that I'm lazy, and I don't want to take them all entirely off. And uh, I don't have to. So the uh, the the tension hoop just lifts right off, and then so does the um, so does the old head. All right, so you might wonder, is this going to hurt anything? I got all these hooks flopping around. Um, no, not really. They're pretty sturdy. They, they would be difficult to bend. Um, they're not going to bend from just doing this. But the greatest risk is that I might put pressure on one of these hooks, and it might act as a lever and might actually twist the shoe might twist the shoe out of place. See, I can sort of, I can twist that. I don't know if you could see that. I'm twisting it back and forth, twisting the shoe out of place. All right, so what? I mean, I can, I can twist, it's just screwed in. So I could just twist it back into place. That's fine. Um, the only danger might be that, you know, this, this kind of twisting of this, of the shoe might mar the finish, especially if I had a, um, uh, a rim with a, a lack of finish on it, I, I wouldn't be so cavalier about doing that. But, um, but it doesn't bother me. Um, I just leave it like that. Okay, so I'm going to put the new head on the banjo and uh, I'm just putting it right over the tone ring. I, I like to put the logo at the uh, neck end. I know some people like to put it at the tailpiece end to hide it. 
but it's a nice deering logo on a deering banjo, so I'm going to show it off. And I just I just placed it over the um, uh, tone ring, and now I'm placing the tension hoop over the head. And what I want to do is uh, get that logo centered in this recess. There's a recess here in the tone ring. Is in the uh, tension hoop. There's a recess here. Uh, to accommodate the strings. A recess that aligns with the neck so that the tension hoop goes below the plane of the front of the neck. And um, I want to align the logo with that recess so that the logo is centered in the recess. And then I want to align that recess with the neck. I'm also observing that it means that the notches in the tension hoop are aligning with the shoes below so that the hooks will align correctly with the notches. So I've got a couple of ways to check the alignment of my tension hoop. I want to be sure that this recess is right here where the neck is and that it is correctly aligned with the neck, that, um, that it spans the entire width of the neck, and I want to check that these notches in the tension hoop are aligning with the shoes below them. Now you, you may not have a, I don't, all of my, not all of my tension hoops are notched ones. So this is particularly important on the notched ones, uh, obviously not so much on ones that, that are grooved and use flat hooks. So once that's in place, where I want it to be, then I physically press it down to get it to seat as much as I can. It's, it's not going to seat very well, it's not going to seat very fully, um, but I want to get it down as much as I can so that the hooks will come up and will engage with the tension hoop. And I'm just going to get a few hooks engaged to hold it in place so I get the, the hook onto the tension hoop and then I tighten it just finger tight, just a little bit. I might have to loosen the nut a bit to get the hook to come up that high because it's, it's higher now because this, um, the uh, original head was clamped down and this head is not clamped down. Uh, so uh, the hooks may not want to easily go over the, uh, the tension hoop at this point. So I'm going to get a few of them on. I'll do this one right here in the front so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to just finger tighten them. This is just to hold the uh, tension hoop and the head firmly onto the, onto the um, rim so they don't come off. And then I'm going to go around and secure more hooks. I'm going to keep pressing down as I do so that I'm getting this head um, uh, firmly, um, firmly um, seated onto the rim and so that um, it's as much as possible evenly seated onto the rim. And with each, uh, each hook that I um, engage, I'm just tightening it finger tight. And as I go around and do that, the head is going to come down a teeny bit lower each time I finger tighten one of these hooks. So it may mean that I have to go around and uh, continually finger tighten the ones that I've already finger tightened. They may come loose as I as I continue to engage more hooks, if that makes sense. So I'm continually pressing down to get firm seating and um, installing the hooks and finger tightening them. Now with those all in place, I continue to press down on the tension hoop, not on the head, on the tension hoop, and make sure that it's firmly seated all the way around and as I do that I re-tighten these nuts finger tight. Keep pressing and re-tightening until they're 
all finger tight and that they stay finger tight and don't come off and uh, aren't loose and rattling around anymore. And then I know I've, uh, I've uh, seated the head as well as I can by hand. The great frustration of, of doing this, of um, tightening these um, hex nuts, is that as you tighten them on one side, they tend to come loose on the other side. That's because the tension hoop is being pulled down as you tighten these. Um, and so the ones on, on the other side are, are coming loose as that tension hoop comes down. So you need to keep, you need to just keep going around repeatedly and, and, and um, re-tightening them until they, until they stay tight, until um, you've gotten it as far down as it's going to go by just finger tightening. Um, it's for this reason that some people like to follow a star pattern the way you would do if you were um, uh, tightening the uh, lug nuts on, on, on a spare tire, on your tire, if you were changing your tire in your car. Um, I find that's a little bit of overkill. It's, it's surprisingly difficult to keep track of what you were doing <laughs> when you do it that way. Um, and um, um, it doesn't really seem to be necessary. Just going around like this, for me anyway, um, has been adequate. All right, so once, once I feel like those are as tight as they're, they're secure, um, and I'm checking that the alignment is good, and it appears to be, I'm going to turn the banjo on its face and continue doing that. Now I press down on the rim, which in turn is going to press down on the uh, tension hoop. And again, make sure that it's secure all the way around and finger tighten all of the nuts. Doing it with the banjo on its face like this means that the, the pressure is distributed across the entire tension hoop. So I'm, I'm pressing on the, by pressing on the rim like this, the rim, in turn, is pressing on the entire tension hoop evenly. So I'm getting even pressure all around it and not pushing on one side more than some other side. All right, so I've done that many times. I've gone around many times, uh, finger tightening all of the nuts and then going back around and continuing to re-finger tighten them because as the uh, tension hoop uh, seated itself further, um, they'll con continue coming loose. And you just have to keep going around and around and re-finger tightening them. I'm just finger tightening them at this point, just to the point where they give me resistance. Um, not, not ratcheting them down at this point. Um, so there's no danger of, of breaking the head by just finger tightening them with two fingers. So now I'm going to use my bracket wrench, my bracket wrench, and... Um, tighten them further. I've tightened them as much as I can finger tight and um, I have no good rule about how to do this. People talk about half a turn, quarter turn. Um, as you could see I'm doing more than that um, and the reason for that is again when you tighten one hook the other hooks tend to loosen. So the other hooks are going to need more turning uh, in order to compensate for their initial loosening and to get them to the uh, same tight point as the first hook. So what I do is I, I tighten them to the point where they're giving me resistance. Um, when I feel it resisting, then I continue for about another half turn or so initially. Um, and then I just know from feel how tight I want each um, nut to be. And, and it's just something you learn from doing this over and over and over again, just how tight it feels. You're never using any force. It just, for me, it gets to the point where I'm feeling a certain amount of resistance from the nut. It's, it's a small amount of resistance. It's not a lot. 
you don't need to do a lot of tightening down after um, after you finger tightened. You don't need to do a lot with the bracket wrench um, in order to get the head up to full tension. So I'm just going around and checking that each nut is tension to the point where it feels right to me. And again, just like with the finger tightening, you may have to go around a few times because you may find that some of them are coming loose. So I keep going around until the nuts stay at a certain level of um, tightness. They give me the kind of resistance that I'm, I'm used to feeling and uh, I continue to feel it on all of them all the way around. That is, I keep going around until there are no more loose ones. Probably a more accurate way to say that. So how do you know when you've tensioned the head enough? Well, there are different ways to check. Um, some people just use finger pressure. They just feel the head and they know how, how much uh, give they want the head to have when they press on it like this. Some people tap it and listen to the note it makes and they want a certain note and they want that note to sound consistent all the way around. I, I don't hear the note really. I, I kind of hear it, but um, my musical talent is not that good that I can tune the head to a certain note. Um, maybe they're just listening for a certain sound rather than a certain note and that's fair enough. Maybe um, uh, another way would be to just get it reasonably tight then string your instrument up and then listen to the tone and, and adjust the tightness until it gives you the tone you want. Uh, that, that's probably the best way actually because ultimately that's what you're going for is, is tone. Um, I use this device, this is the drum dial here. I don't know how well you could see that but it has a face and a dial, um, a needle rather. Uh, so a needle and a dial and um, the, the needle is, is just measuring the, the uh, tension. So you, pr you place the drum dial on the head near the rim, obviously not over the rim, it has to be over um, empty space, and it's, it's giving you an indication of the tension of the head at that point. And you move it around the head, keeping it close to the rim, and looking at the readout and you want to get the readout to be consistent. I find that the drum dial helps me to get um, the level of tension that I want to get it consistently each time um, and to make sure that it's consistent all the way around the banjo, that it's even all around the banjo and that I'm consistently tensioning my head to the same tension each time um, I, change a, I change a head. So I bring it up to, on the drum dial, I bring it up to about 89 or so, and I'm noticing that it's actually high. <laughs> I've slightly over tightened my head. So I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna uh, loosen all of the nuts, about a quarter turn or so. If I had a bluegrass banjo, I, w I would want that head to be nice and tight. But for open back choir playing, we, we don't want the head that tight. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue to go around and make sure that the head tension is even all the way around, um, all the way around the rim. And adjust the nuts accordingly until the, the head tension, until the drum dial gives me the same readout all the way around the rim. All right, so at this point now, all we're doing is um, restringing the banjo. I always restring by starting with the third string. Um, that one is in the middle position and is, um, <laughs> that one is in the middle position and is going to um, hold the tailpiece in place. I like to use needle nose pliers to give a little bend to the hoop and to the loop end rather um, so that it will correctly fit over the uh, posts on the tailpiece. 
So you want about this much slack in the string. Mm, about enough to fit a grapefruit under there, I suppose. And I, I'm not shy about grabbing the string and directing it right where I want it to be on that post. I want it to wind downward. So I want the string, uh, the new string that's coming onto the post to be low, to be underneath the string that's already wound on. And I will grab that string and pull it down and make it go where I want it to go so that it um, winds correctly downward onto the post and is not winding onto itself. I'm going to approximate where my bridge goes and rub a little graphite into all the slots on the bridge. Okay, it's all strung up and tuned up and um, uh, of course it sounds a little bit bright because it's brand new strings, but let's give it a listen. So um, what does the correct head tension do to the tone of your banjo anyway? Um, if you have the head tension too tight, um, then you'll get an increasingly bright and astringent, I, I describe it as an astringent sound to your, um, to your uh, banjo. Um, if the head is too loose, um, it'll get increasingly uh, plunky and um, it'll start to deaden the sound until it starts to sound like loose rubber bands. You'll also get a weird echoey sound that won't go away um, no matter how much you stuff the pot. Um, it'll have this echoey sound to it. Uh, that's usually an indication that you have a head that's too loose. So you can experiment by uh, tightening it and loosening it a little bit and listening to how the tone changes and find the sweet spot that you like and if you got a drum dial, you can note what the tension is um, at the sweet spot that you like and then be able to replicate that each time. It may not transfer, it probably won't, transfer from banjo to banjo. Um, each one uh, probably has its own peculiarities and um, uh, uh, sounds best at slightly different head tensions. Um, but. Um, at least for consistency's sake in, in that one banjo, it's, it's nice to know what, where the uh, tension should be. I find around 88, 89 on the drum dial, for me, is, is generally the sweet spot. Sometimes as high as 90. Um, I have not, I still need to um, adjust the intonation now. Um, the bridge was completely removed and, and the head is new so that it's I just estimated the placement of the bridge but I need to figure out where exactly it goes and that that's a um, uh, the details of how to do that are beyond the scope of this of this video and that's it I've got a new head on my banjo and it's tuned up and it sounds great and I fixed the problem that I was having which was the crown is the wrong height and um, um, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. Thank you very much for watching. I, I, if you liked it, I hope you'll watch some of my other videos where I just share my enthusiasm for open back banjos and claw hammer banjo playing. Um, like, subscribe, um, and I'll continue to make more. Thanks very much for joining me today. Happy claw hammering.